Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is Divine Heights Bible Church, Abiokuta. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our Thursday Revival Service on this sixth day of May 2020. Please, I want you to gather your families together and let us be in the presence of God at this particular time. Before we go ahead with the message of today, I will want us to spend time to worship God. Lifting up higher, lifting up higher. The Lord is good. I will lift him up higher. Anywhere I go, I will lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. The Lord is good. I will lift him up higher. Anywhere I go, I will lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. The Lord is good. I will lift him up higher. Anywhere I go. I will lift him up higher, lift him up higher, lift him up higher. The Lord is good, I will lift him up higher. Anywhere I go, I will lift him up higher, lift him up higher, lift him up I am that Lord is good. I will lift him up higher anywhere I go. I will lift him up higher. That wonderful name, Jesus. That wonderful name. Jesus, that wonderful name, Jesus, there is no other name I know, that wonderful name, that wonderful name, Jesus, that wonderful name. Jesus, that wonderful name. Jesus, there is no other name I know. Beloved, I thank God that you are connected to us at this particular time. This is Divine Heights Bible Church, Abbey Okuta. And the program you are connected to it's our Thursday revival service. At this particular time, I want us to pray. Father, we've come before you today. We thank you because you are the Almighty God. We thank you because you are the all sufficient God in our lives. Today, O oh God, come and empower us from above. Today, O oh God, come and speak into our inner man. Lord, use the service of today to strengthen us for your glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beloved, we are at a time now where the devil wants you to be afraid. I know that the type of time we are in now, some people are afraid that they may be victims of the plague that is going on at this particular time. I pray for you that will not be your own lot. I know that some people are even afraid of what will happen to them after this plague. Many are afraid of their future. Others are afraid of their source of income. Beloved, God is sending me to you 
at this particular time. God is sending this message to you and members of your family at this particular time. So please, I want you to set it up and hear the word of the Lord to you this evening. Beloved, I tell you this message, refuse to live in fear. Refuse to live in fear. That is the message that God is sending to you and I at this particular hour. Refuse to live in fear. Open your Bibles with me at this particular time as we look at three different passages in the Bible. The first passage that we want to look at is in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Beloved, fear is not of God. God has not given you and I the spirit of fear. Beloved, the Bible recognizes the power of fear to the extent that you need three different spirits to overcome fear in your life according to that passage. You need the spirit of power. You need the spirit of love. And you need the spirit of a sound mind. I pray for you today by the power of God. Fear will not rule over your life at this particular time. Open the game with me, please, to the book of Revelations, chapter 21. Revelations, chapter 21. I'm going to read verse 8. Revelations, chapter 21. I'm reading verse 8. It says, But the fearful, fear there, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Beloved, the fearful, the unbelieving, the liars, they are all grouped together. I pray in the name of Jesus that you and I will not be counted among the fearful. Beloved, the third passage that I want us to look at is a long one, so we should just look at some passage, some verses on that passage. Matthew chapter 14. There is a story that is recorded in verse, from verse 23 to verse 30. Matthew chapter 14 from verse 23 to verse 30. But beloved, if I can summarize that passage, we are told that Jesus Christ decided to leave his disciples. And he went up into a mountain apart to pray. That is in verse 23. Now the disciples decided to go on a journey, verse 24. But the sheep that they were traveling in was tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. But brethren, when you look at verse 26, it is, we are told that, And when the disciples saw him, they saw Jesus Christ walking to them in the sea. And when they saw him, Verse 20 says, And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. So they were afraid. Beloved, if I go along with that story, you will see Peter saying that, If you are the one, if Jesus is the one, walk on the sea, bid me to come unto you. We are told that our brother Paul stepped on the water. But look at verse 30. But when he saw the wind burst us, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Beloved, when you look at the passage I've just read to you, Peter started to sink because he was afraid. So fear promotes sinking. I pray for you and I at this time. Fear will not rule over our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. What is fear? What is fear? Number one, fear is an evil power that weakens one from the inner person. Fear is an evil power that weakens one from the inner person and puts one at the dread of something else. It is 
an evil power. I pray for you and I that this evil power we have no control over our lives and destiny in the name of Jesus. What again is fear? Fear is a spirit. But let me put it in the way you understand me. Fear is a demon. There is a demon called the spirit of fear. When you see a life that is possessed by this demon of fear, that person will be afraid of almost everything around him or her. Beloved, somebody that is possessed with the spirit of fear, when he sees an ordinary fly flying, the person will become afraid. Any, in fact, somebody that is possessed with the spirit of fear will be afraid of a, of a thing that is even does not exist. I pray for you today, by the power of God, you will not be afraid. What again is fear? Beloved, fear is a weapon that the enemies employ to attack their victims. Fear is a weapon that enemies or opponents commonly employ to attack their victims because fear can destroy. Beloved, if you look at the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, it says, Fear has torment. Many destinies have been tormented because through fear. I pray today that you and I will not submit our destiny to fear. You will not live in fear. You will not be afraid. Beloved, what again is fear? Fear is a disease. It's a chronic disease. In fact, many problems in people's body, they are connected to fear. When fear has come upon a life, it has been found out that some other diseases find it easy to take over such a life. I pray for you at this time. At a time when the enemy wants the whole world to be afraid, you will not be afraid in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power of God, fear will not have power over your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me share with us some biblical cases of fear. Some cases of fear in the Bible. The first one is something that you will see in the book of Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. If you look at verses 9 and 10, we are told it's a story about Adam and Eve. They heard the voice of God following their encounter with Satan. And they said, we heard your voice, verse 10, and we were afraid. Beloved, when Satan has taken over a life, it makes such a life to be afraid. As early as Genesis chapter 3, you find that fear has been operating in, in life. So fear is an old weapon of the devil. Fear infected Adam and Eve in the garden. I pray in the name of Jesus. Fear will not rule over your own life in the name of Jesus. I pray for you and I, you will refuse to live in fear at such a time as you are in now in the name of Jesus. If you look at the book of Job chapter 3, Job chapter 3, Job made an important statement. He said, for the things which I greatly fear is come upon me. Beloved, Job 3, 25. So Job confessed that fear attracted to his life those things that he was afraid of. I pray for you as you are listening to me. By the power of God, you will refuse fear in your life in the name of Jesus. I speak to you. The power to refuse fear, let that power come upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. So beloved, refuse fear. Refuse to be afraid at such a time as you are in now. In fact, Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. In verse 24, God spoke to Abraham and said, Fear not, for I will be with you. Beloved, that is the message that God is sending to you and I at this particular time. Because God has promised to be with you. Beloved, do not be afraid. In fact, there are many instances in the Bible when God had to bring the message of do not be afraid to his own people. 
in Joshua chapter 8 verse 1. Joshua chapter 8 verse 1. God spoke to Joshua and said, Fear not. Fear not. Beloved, you should not be afraid. At such a time as this, refuse to, re to live in fear. In Exodus chapter 14 verse 13. Exodus chapter 14 verse 13. Moses had to challenge the children of Israel and told them, Fear you not. Beloved, that is exactly the message that God is asking me to bring to you and I at this particular time. That is the message that God is sending to you. Refuse to live in fear. Beloved, no matter what is happening in the world today, God is saying to you and I, refuse to live in fear. I read the story in Matthew chapter 25 where a master gave some talents to some of his people, of his, of his, of his subordinates. But when you get to verse 24 to 25, you will see somebody who was given only one talent, who cannot reproduce that one talent. And in verse 25, Matthew 25 verse 25, the person says, I was afraid and went to hide, to hide the talent. Beloved, the man who was given one talent could not multiply the talent because he was afraid. Beloved, when fear is in your life, fear will cause many dangers. What are the effects of fear in a life? What are the effects of fear in a life? Number one, fear will kill faith in a man. Fear and faith in God cannot stay together. When you, afraid, when you allow yourself to be afraid, fear will kill faith in your life. Number two, beloved, fear allows small problems to become big in a life. A small problem will become enlarged when fear comes upon that life. I pray for you. Please, at such a time as this, refuse to be afraid. Refuse to be afraid. Number three, effect of fear in a life. Beloved, fear paralyzes the power of God in people's lives. Those things that God wants to do in your life, when you allow fear to come in, Fear can paralyze them. I pray for you. I speak to your life. When others are afraid in such a time as this, you, a child of God, you will refuse fear in your own life. Beloved, you need to refuse fear in your life. Because number four, fear can imprison a life. When you are fearful, you will, it's as if you are in a prison yard and you are not able to do anything great. Beloved, when you are afraid, you, you will even find that fear attracts to your life some strange sicknesses and infirmity. Fear attracts to people's life some strange sicknesses and infirmity. Beloved, fear makes the enemy to be stronger than you. Fear will empower your enemies to be stronger than you. I pray for you and I at this time. Please fear not. Fear not. Do not be afraid. Beloved, fear makes people to think that the worst will happen to their lives. Even as things are going on right now, if you allow fear to come upon you, you will be thinking that you are going to be a victim of the pandemic that is going on now. I pray that that will not be your lot. Beloved, I pray for you. And I speak the word of God to you. You will not be afraid for such a time as we are in, in the name of Jesus. I had the story of a man. The man had an accident. From that day, he decided not to enter a vehicle again because he was afraid that if he ever enters a vehicle, he will have an accident. Beloved, if, if, if that man needs to travel over a long distance, he will not go. So fear has been keeping him in one position of life for a long time. He could not make progress like his colleagues because he was afraid to enter into a vehicle. And fear keep on telling him that any vehicle he enters so we have accidents. Beloved, that fear is hindering his destiny. He cannot become the best that he can be in life because of fear. I pray in the name of Jesus. You will refuse fear in your own life 
in Jesus' name. Amen. I also had the story of a lady. At the age of 17, 17 she saw a pregnant mother. Before delivery, she saw a pregnant mother laboring during delivery. And she became very afraid because, because of that fear. She now made a statement and said, if this is the way people give birth to children, I will not give birth to a child. It was a statement of fear. Many years went back by. It got, she got married. And she was expecting to have a baby. But baby refused to come. Why? Many years earlier, fear had made her to make a pronouncement upon her own life. That pronouncement that she made turned out to become a cause. I pray in the name of Jesus that fear will not make you to make negative confessions against your own life in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, there are many things that people are afraid of in life. There are many things that people are afraid of in life. People are afraid of failure. Some people, the fear they have now is that they are afraid of failing. I want to tell you that let that fear live your life. You will succeed by the power of God in the name of Jesus. There are people, beloved, who are afraid of disappointment. There are people who are afraid of tragedy. Some people are always afraid that they could be attacked by robbers. There are people who are afraid of misfortune. I know that there are people who are afraid of some problems in life. Loneliness is making some people to be afraid. Many people are afraid of what their enemies can do to them. Beloved, are you afraid at this particular time? God is sending this message to you. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Refuse to live in fear. Beloved, some people are afraid of man. A woman being like you and I. You are afraid of what they can do to you. If God be with you, if God be for you, who can be against you? What that person is saying is that if God is on your side, no man can overcome you. So, beloved, don't be afraid of man. Some others are afraid of things that are unknown. I pray in the name of Jesus that Satan will not manufacture something to your life for you to be afraid of it. Do you know one of the fear that is troubling many people today? So many people are afraid of death. There are some people who are afraid that the coronavirus, the COVID-19, will attack them. Beloved, any small cough that some people will have now, something will just speak to them, you've got the plague. I pray for you. You will not be afraid. Beloved, at a time we are in now, even when some people have ordinary malaria, they will start to shake and they'll be afraid that COVID-19 had infected them. I pray for you. You will overcome that fear in the name of Jesus. Beloved, if there is a time when you and I should stand and overcome fear, it is such a time as we are in now. Please, beloved, I want to challenge you by the power of God. Do not be afraid. Refuse to submit your life to fear. And that's why at this particular time, beloved, I want us to look at the causes of fear in the lives of people. What are the causes of fear in the life of people? Number one, fear can be inherited. I know that you'll be surprised to hear that. There are families where the spirit of fear moved from the father to the children or from the mother to the children. And throughout the family, everybody lives in fear. They do not operate in the level of faith. I pray for you that by the power of God, you will deliver yourself. I heard of a family, every one of them, when they see a lizard, they will be shaking. Fear of lizard, even on the road. If they see a lizard on the road, they will run away because they are afraid of lizard. I pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever fear you have inherited from your ancestors. Let that fear die over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two cause of fear in people's life is as a result 
of lack of knowledge. When you are ignorant of the powers behind a situation, it's likely that you'll be afraid of it. I had a, a funny story of a town in Nigeria here where a masquerade normally come out at a particular time and everybody would be fearful of that masquerade. One young man came out one day and saw the masquerade. Normally, they expected that he should be afraid. Suddenly, this man became courageous. He was not afraid. He did not run away from the masquerade. And as the masquerade was coming to him, the man too moved to the masquerade. Surprisingly, he reached out to the head of the masquerade and pull out what was on the head of that masquerade. Lo and behold, who was behind the masquerade? A classmate of his that cannot stand him in real life. Beloved, when the masquerade saw that they had seen his face, the masquerade was the one that ran away from him. I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever that is unknown, that is making you to be afraid, you will know the secret behind it in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, some people are afraid today because of their past negative experiences of life. They've experienced some failures in the past and something is telling them that they, that failure will be repeated over their lives. They've experienced some attacks in the past and they're afraid that the attack may recur again. Beloved, I speak to your life. Now that God is in you, whatever makes you to be afraid in the past, that thing will fail over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me tell you, beloved, this. Those enemies that you saw yesterday, by the power of God, you will see them again no more in the name of Jesus. You will see them again no more in the name of Jesus. The Egyptians of your place of work, the Egyptians of your business place that attacked you yesterday, by the power of God, you will see them again no more in the name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, what again are the causes of fear? Beloved, Fear can come upon a life as a result of what I called arrows of fear. Arrows of fear. Some enemies fire some spiritual arrows that make them to become afraid. Sometimes they make to hear some negative news that can make you to be afraid. They will tell you that somebody that's close to you has just died because of so, so, so. And you become afraid that that death has come to your own doorsteps. I pray for you today. Any news that wants you to be afraid, by the power of God, through this message that you are listening to today, you will overcome them in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, some negative reports and information that people receive can promote fear in their lives. You are hearing this message today because God is speaking to you for such a time as we are in now. And the message that God is asking me to bring to you is refuse to live in fear. Refuse to live in fear. Let me share with you, beloved, some facts about fear. Some facts why you need to refuse to live in fear. Fact number one is that progress will be difficult in life. For people who live in life, fear. If you live your life in fear, it will be difficult for you to make progress in life. So, beloved, refuse to live in fear. Number two fact about fear that I want to share with you, beloved. Hear this very well. Many problems in life will be powerless if fear is not assisting them. Many problems of life will be powerless if fear is not assisting them. I heard the story of a, of a man in the hospital. Doctors looked at him and said, Mr. Man, you have cancer and we are giving you just three months to live. Get ready to die. So they gave this man three months to live and they were expecting that the man would be dejected. The man would be fearful. The love they were surprised when, following this news, this man jumped up and started to go around the hospital and pray for people. Say, they told me that he was going to die 
but he was praying for them that they should be healed. In fact, he started making jests. He would get to some people and tell them, I've been told that I, I have some few weeks to live. You have a message for God so that I could help you to tell God because I'm going to God before you. Beloved, that man disgraced fear. That man disappointed fear. The man that they gave three months to live because he did not allow fear to rule over him. That man was alive six months later. He was alive a year later. That man is still alive 20 years after that satanic prediction. I pray for you. Those things, those information, those negative reports that you have received from doctors that is making you to be afraid, let those reports have no effect over you in the name of Jesus. Probably as you are listening to this message, there is a medical report about your life. Beloved, that medical report is not the final. There is a God that has the final say over your life. Let that medical report over